Hey everybody, welcome to Practical Alchemy. On today's episode, do you wanna build a bar sign? Because that is what I'm gonna show you how to do in Fusion 360 and with your CNC machine. So at the time of recording this video, St. Patrick's Day is coming up in a few days. So I thought this would be a great opportunity just to show a sign making process using Fusion and some V carving. And I thought that well, let's go ahead and make the St. Patrick's Day theme. That'd be, that would be really fun. So it's not just a sign, it's gonna be a pub sign or a bar sign that's personalized to you. Now, first thing that I'm gonna show you is some artwork creation. Now, you can totally do this, all of this, inside of Fusion 360. I'm not gonna walk through that entire process. I wanna short, keep the video short and sweet. But if you'd wanna skip over that completely, but do really like the art that I'm using, hop over to my Gumroad page where you can download this DXF file and you'll be able to use this immediately. Just like that, I've already tested it, I've already cleaned it up, everything is perfect. You can swap in your own fonts and different icons. I think this would be a really, really great file for you. But regardless, let's talk about the artwork creation first. Before we jump into Fusion, and I am gonna jump over to Adobe Illustrator. This is actually where I like to build a lot of my artwork. Like I said, you can build all of this stuff in Fusion 360. It's just not ideal for some of the more complicated shapes like our steins and our shamrocks here. So when I kicked off this process, I just did some ideation of some different icons that I would wanna create, some different legends related to St. Patrick's Day, and use those to start to, as you can see, do some sketching in Procreate and then create some simple icons. I used Illustrator to start to refine this, and then I started to lay out my sign work. And so what you can see here is that I've got my frame, and this is a frame that I use all the time. I love this frame. This is such a great frame for all the different holidays, and there's so many things that you can do with it. When it comes to sign making and, and bar signs particularly, uh, a couple things I wanna call out here. This is a fairly generic font. This is the Georgia font, but I vertically stretched it so that it fits the space a little bit better. And what I think really makes signs really nice, uh, you see this a lot in logos and in signage, is if the first letter and the last letter are actually larger than the rest of the piece. So you can see here, this is 312 and something something, it got a little stretched out, whereas the rest of the letters are 292 points tall. So. Changing up the font can really be a good way to make it look a little bit more designed, all right? And then what I like to do is add some holiday-themed iconography up here at the top. As you can see, we've got some beer glasses and we've got some shamrocks. And then down at the bottom, I've put a few other icons that I thought would be great for the holiday. So, you know, we've got a cross here. St. Patrick used the shamrock to explain the idea of the cross. And then I had some filigree elements and I actually uh, added a little snake hit here because St. Patrick, as legend has it, drove the snakes out of Ireland. You can see that this file is pretty dirty. And what I did is I actually used this because I was exploring a lot of different ideas here. So this is really great because it allows me to drag fonts in and out really quickly. And it allows me to adjust icons very quickly. Again, things that you could totally do inside of Fusion 360, but I think it's a little bit faster to use a vector editing program when you can. Now, before I exported this, what I did is you can actually see there's a duplicate here. So this is kind of my working file. This is my finalized design where I really started to clean up a lot of the artwork, started outlining all of my lines so that they have thickness to them rather than just being a line. And then I also came in and cleaned up all of my icons here to make sure that there's, you know, minimizing all the control points and things like that to make sure that I've got a really, really clean import into Fusion. 360 and a couple of tools that I want to call out here, uh, not sponsored, but uh, Astute Graphics is an awesome plugin pack. It's like $100 a year and they have so many great tools that make using Illustrator so much faster and so much better. Uh, one thing that I really love here is their vector first aid tool, which is literally one click of a button and it will clean up excess control points for you. And I think it generally speaking, it does a really good job of preserving your corners and your edges, but still cleaning up that line work. The other tool that I really love is the reform tool, which allows you to quickly select and grab shapes and adjust them, which is awesome. Uh, I actually started with one shamrock here and I wanted to play around with some different shapes. So, you know, I wanted to kind of make some minimal adjustments to them 
make them each look a little bit unique. It's a really cool tool for very easily kind of modifying the shapes of these more complicated things rather than grabbing control point handles. With all of that done, the last thing that I added here is you can see this little line. This is actually going to be my center point so that when I import it into Fusion 360, I've got a clean center point that I can use for my modeling and making sure that everything is scaling around the center point of this artwork. It also gives me a good point if I wanna change something out later and I pull in some new designs into Illustrator, I can very quickly export them and locate them correctly relative to where I've placed the art in Fusion 360. So then once I've got a really nice clean, all my fonts are now outlined, and then I'm gonna create a new file, which is gonna be my export file for Fusion 360. So what I've got here, as you can see, I've got everything in separate layers because that way it's easy for me to grab it in Fusion and select the layers that I want to use. Again, if I'm changing out different elements, I can use the same file, export a new DXF and only import the layer that, I need, that I've made changes to. So now that we've got this, everything's clean, everything is labeled correctly. Again, if you go over to the Gumroad page and you download this file, this is the file that you're going to get. So it will be fully editable inside of Illustrator and also you don't have Illustrator or Vector Editing Program, you can download the X app, import it into Fusion, and we're gonna be working V-carving straight from this. All right, so done with Illustrator. Last thing I'm gonna do here is just go in here and file, export, and we're gonna export that as a DXF file. All right, great. And hit okay. With that done, we are going to jump over to Fusion. And now we are over in Fusion 360. Once your artwork is created, the actual setup process inside of Fusion is pretty straightforward. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to create my work piece here. So I'm gonna just create a very simple sketch on the top plane. All right, now as you can see a couple of document setups here, I do have my document set to inches, which is what I was building my DXF file in. And I've also have my Z axis set to up in my preferences. So uh, if you don't know how to do that, you basically click on your icon here, preferences, and then you are going to set your default modeling orientation to Z. You can set it to whatever you want, but I use Z up. So if you're following along, that is what I am doing here. All right, so first thing first, let's create a rectangle. We are going to use a center point rectangle and we are going to drag that out from the origin point so that it's centered. Then we're going to dimension this rectangle to the size of your raw workpiece that you're going to be carving. So in my case, that is 25.5 inches tall and it is going to be 11 and three quarter inches deep. With that done, you are going to finish your sketch. And next, we are just going to extrude that up. So just select that profile, and that is going to be the thickness of your workpiece. So in my case, I have measured my workpiece with my caliper and is 0.445 inches thick, not quite half an inch. All right, great. This, once you've got this, you're good to go. Now with our artwork piece set up, we are going to insert our DXF file. So I'm gonna navigate over to my file, hit open. And it's going to ask me which plane I wanna set this on. I'm going to select my top plane. And as you can see here, it has brought it in nice and clean. I, in terms of my DXF layers, I'm going to select all of these because I want all of this and hit okay. With our artwork imported, the next thing that we need to do is move it over to the origin point. So we are going to right click and edit this sketch. We are going to click and drag to select everything, come up to the modify tab. We are going to move and we're going to select the point to point option here. This is why we've got our, or, or our middle point. So we click on the edge of this line here and now we are going to drag up to the center point here. All right, I just wanna make sure that this didn't do anything weird like move it to a different plane. Okay, so it's all on the sketch plane and we are going to hit okay. Scale should be perfect. Uh, like I said, I was using an 11 and a half inch work piece. I wanted to make it a little bit smaller than that. Obviously, once you've got this imported, you are more than welcome to scale it up or down and it won't affect the final piece. So 
all of that is laid out and it is looking really good. So let's go ahead and hit finish sketch. And we are really totally done modeling here. No other additional 3D modeling is required. We're gonna hit save and then we are going to move over to our manufacturing tab to start setting up our V-carve. So we're gonna hit design and go over to manufacture. All right, so over in the manufacturing tab, this is gonna be pretty simple as well because we are gonna do this cut and carve with two bits. We're gonna use our V-bit and our Jenny and milling bit. So first thing we need to do is create a new setup and the machine is already selected. And just come down here, we are going to follow our model orientation. Uh, our origin is going to be the stock box point and we're gonna use the top center point for this. And come on over here to the stock tab. We are not going to have Stock side offset can be zero because we sized it correctly. Top stock, <laughs> tongue twister, stock top offset can also be set to zero because we're not doing any kind of face planing or anything like that. We are going to use that and we know that our stock is now matching our real life stock so we can hit okay. All right, so whenever you're doing your carving, I like to do the V carving first before you cut things out. Same as carving a pumpkin, right? Go small to big because the less wood that you've got like around your frame, the harder it's gonna be to hold everything down. So to do a V carve first, we're gonna go up here and select 2D engrave. And then it's gonna give us some options. First thing is to select our tool. Uh, inside of my practical alchemy bits here, I've got my Armana V90 degree V carving bit, which is awesome. Love this little guy. And we are gonna disable the coolant and pick one of our standard presets. And as you can see here, it is automatically going to load our cutting feed rate and our plunge feed rate. Spindle speed is recommended, but obviously that is not controlled by the router unless you have an actual spindle. I have a Makita router on my hobbyist machine, so it's good to have it in there just for reference, but you need to set that manually. All right, great. So now the next thing to do is just select the contours. The way that I like to do this is I actually like to set up all of my contours in kind of small groups. That way I'm not missing anything. And it's easy for me to go ahead and remove things if I, for example, change the this from Irish pub to something else. Uh, or if... <laughs> what's Irish bar. So anyway, I like to do it in small groups. So let me show you what that looks like. So let's just start with the smallest thing first, and we are just going to start selecting our contour. So let's do all of our top artwork first. All right, great. So all of the paths in this top section are selected. Now, the, another reason that I like to do smaller groups is because it allows me to simulate things and really check my work as I go. And that way I'm not, especially when there's so many different things to carve, I'm not missing anything. So I like to turn the model off so I can only see the stock material. And then I'm going to hit play to simulate my carve. And it's going to come through. Everything's looking really good. The main thing that I wanna make sure of for something like this is that these are pretty wide profiles. So I wanna come into the side view here and just make sure that I'm not carving all the way through my workpiece. Looks like I'm actually pretty safe, um, but you always wanna double check to make sure that you're not gonna carve through the backside of your workpiece and make sure that it's picking up all the elements the way that you like them. Once you're happy with that, we can go ahead and exit the simulation and we're just gonna repeat that process for the rest of our path. So probably gonna speed up this video a little bit so you don't have to just watch me clicking and dragging, but uh, we'll come back and regroup after I've done that. So create another uh, engraved path and now we can start to select our larger text. Okay, again, we are going to turn off our model so we can watch the simulation and we are going to simulate this with our machine. Speed it up a little bit. All the letters are looking good and we're just gonna check again the side profile or the front face, make sure we're not carving through, everything looks good. Exit the simulation, model back on and now we just gotta turn on these elements here at the bottom. Okay. 
All right, and now we are going to create another engraved path for our bottom details here. And this is where, again, I think it makes sense sometimes to create smaller groups of paths versus selecting everything all at once. Because be now that I've separated this, say, for example, you wanted to have a different icon down here. Maybe you wanted to have some more complicated filigree, or maybe you rather than have very swirly filigree, you want to do some more kind of uh, be like some type of like an Irish knot or something like that, something that is or maybe you want to put your initials or something like that or your favorite cocktail recipe. I, I had some other phrases down here like uh, home of the uh, drunken shamrock or something like that. So you can play around with that. All you have to do is import another DXF file or add some additional text here. So really very customizable and then you don't have to go back and recarve everything else. You can just swap in different elements as you like them. All right, last tool path that we're gonna test here in our VCarve. Pretty straightforward. I don't think we're gonna have any issues from the side profile and we are good. Okay, good. So let's hit save. This is a good stopping point. All right, now it is time to run our contour pass. So we are going to have to, oh, we actually forgot. There's one more. We have to do our, our frames, not forget our frames here. Again, this is why you do it in passes so that you don't forget things. All right, just turn the model off. That all looks really good. So we're gonna exit the simulation there. You can rename these if you like. And now we need to cut out our shape. So at this point, we need to switch our bits. So we're gonna do a two-dimensional contour. All right, when we select our tool, I'm going to select my uh, Jenny carbide bit. It is a quarter inch up cut down cut bit. And you can see that I've got my preset set to standard wood so that it controls my uh, cutting feed rate, which is much faster than my other one and we should be good to go. All right, so here's where this is important. So we're gonna select our geometry, which is the outer frame. Oh, one more thing that I want you to make sure that you're paying attention to when you are doing these 2D contours. Uh, if I go over to my chain here and select it, you can see there's a little arrow, and right now that is set inside of my path, right? It doesn't know when you select a contour, whether you're on the inside or the outside of that contour. So make sure that you click that arrow to show that it is outside. Here's why. Let's go ahead and simulate this one more time. You see this? Let's start this tool path. It's got a lead in here, right? So if there's a little jog in. If you do that on the wrong side, you're gonna end up with a little divot here inside of your workpiece, which is gonna be a real bummer, especially if that is the last thing that you cut. Great. So we are going to select our geometry, which is the outer frame. But unlike a V carve where the depth is set by the machine moving up and down to control the width of these paths for this one, we actually need to tell it where the bottom is, right? Because it doesn't know. So when we go over to the heights tab here, what we can do is select the bottom height and we can just set this to model bottom. So now it's going to set the bottom here. All right, come on over here. And I like to do this in multiple depths. Uh, just to set that down. I, I tend to be a little more conservative. I know people are probably going to say this is way too slow um, and I'm okay with that. And then we're going to do one finishing step down uh, just to clean up that bottom edge a little bit. And there's one more thing that I want to do here. I actually need to go back to my uh, geometry tab and I want to add some tabs here because I don't want this thing to... Uh, <laughs> If I cut it all the way around, I'm not going to have anything to hold it in place once it gets to the end. So we definitely need to add uh, some tabs here. This is very aggressive with our tabs. So let's definitely increase the distance here. And that looks pretty good, except that they are very, very thin. So let's increase that tab width to 0.35. And let's check. That looks pretty good. I think that that's going to be safe. So now you can see that what's happening here before we even simulate, right? We've got multiple step down depths and we've got some tabs here that are going to hold our workpiece. And then we can simply trim those off. So I'll do a quick simulation here. As you can see, it's going down multiple depths. It's cutting out our shape. And I am really happy with the way this is looking. So now 
We are, we're happy with our design. We're happy with our simulations. Let's hit save one more time. And now it's time to export. So I had gotten this wrong when I started off using Fusion 360. You can export multiple tool paths as long as they use the same bit. So I'm going to select all of my VCarve paths. I'm going to come up here to post processing and I'm going to call this something unique. So Saint Patrick. And we'll call this uh, V carve. And what I like to do to myself too is I like to put in a numerical indicator so that I know what version it is. Um, so if I'm I'm going through that, or what I'll do is I'll put this where it's this is the first thing that I want to cut, and then I'll call it V1. That that tends to be my preferred naming. <laughs> that is tends to be my preferred naming structure, and then my output is going to be at my jump drive, which I need to go grab. So once you've got that, you're going to hit post. I'm going to go grab that and come back. All right, back to the desk with the jump drive installed. And the next thing I'm going to do is select my contour pass. And again, I'm going to post process this. So same name, we'll call this St. Patrick. And we'll call this cut. Call this O2, because this is the second thing that we're going to do. And it is version one and then we're gonna hit post. We're done in Fusion 360, that is it. Really pretty simple. You're certainly welcome to use my design as a starting point. Let me put it into the front view really quick in case you just wanna take a uh, very quick screenshot here. Uh, if you just wanna follow it but don't wanna buy the model, you're certainly welcome to do that. That's why it's here. All right, there you go. All right, so that's it. We are done in Fusion 360, all running off of one sketch. Like I said, again, I'll repeat it. You could totally build all of this inside of Fusion 360. It's gonna take a while to set up all of those sketches, but it's totally doable. Um, I would definitely encourage you to either purchase this or take a screenshot and so that you can rebuild it more quickly. Uh, but once you've got this file, this is a very, very, very flexible file. Great for gifting, great for all kinds of different holidays. So let's go down to the machine now and cut it out. All right, and that is gonna be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful to you. If you did, hit the like button. If you had any questions or topics you'd like to see in future videos, leave those in the comments. And as always, hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date as I release new content. Thank you so much for watching. Happy St. Patrick's Day, and I will see you in the next one. And don't forget to hit save.